Let me help you understand the sinful nature uh, that we all have. It's a sinful nature that says, I can do it. Okay, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. Oh, trust and obey God, I can do it. Oh, be a good person, I can do it. If I work hard, I can do it. That's what empty, false religion comes from. This attitude of, oh, we got these rules, we can do it. Those, those sinful people over there, they, they can't. Uh, we look down on other people because we're the good religious people who can follow the rules and they're not. It's where hypocritical, dead, empty religion comes from. This attitude that says, we can do it. But anyone who's walked in the wilderness and saw the sinful, unbelieving hearts that spring out from us, we understand, no, we can't do it. Can't do it. Uh, I tell this story real quick. I had this friend. I had this friend, okay? Um, well, when I first met him, he had been part of a cult, okay? Straight up uh, uh, cult. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, and not to get into everything they believe, but they deny the essence of the gospel, the free gift of the gospel. They deny that. They, they, they say that's not true. And he had been part of that, okay? And uh, he was good at following the rules. He was really good, really good, until the day he wasn't, and they kicked him out. Uh, and he wasn't allowed to talk to his family. His family wasn't allowed to talk to him, more likely, what was more, you know, more accurately what was going on. Uh, and like, so he had lived this life, and now he had no one because they all said, no, you know, you, you failed, and so you're out. And, um, and that's when I met him, and I remember talking with him about the gospel, and I remember saying, it's free, you know that? Like, God, God Jesus is our Savior, and it's not about you and what you can do. It's about him and what he did living a perfect life in our place, dying for our sins. And my friend T, I remember, I'll never forget it, he said to me, I wish I could believe that. I wish that was the truth. And I remember, I was like, you know what? I can work with that. Uh, here's what I want you to do. I want you to just read the Bible and pray. Just read the Bible and pray and ask for God to open your eyes. Just read the Bible and pray. Like, promise me you'll do that. And he's like, okay, I'll do it. And then we got together sometime later, and he's like, you know what? I did what you said. Um, and, uh, and this is the verse that I found. It's, and it's, it's, it's the part where I just read, where, where Jesus is talking to this crowd. And he says, don't work for food that spoils, but for the food that endures to eternal life which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God, the Father, has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works that God requires? So that's a good question. Jesus said, don't work for everything that's going to perish. Work for the food that's going to endure, for everlasting. That's what you should be working for. And then they're like, okay, what do you want us to do? We'll do it. What's the work? And Jesus said, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. That's the great work. That's, that, what that is, it's kind of like an anti-work, okay? It's true. If you understand this and you understand what human nature wants to do, like we, we want to have this attitude of like, we can do it, we can do it, we can do it, and the work of God is actually stop because no, you can't, okay? Stop because your hearts are sinful and sick. Stop. But the good news is you don't have to. You don't, you don't have to do anything. Just believe in the one that God has sent. Believe, not in the goodness of yourself, but in the goodness of him. The goodness of God, who out of his great love, sent Jesus to be our savior. Everything that we worry about, he wants to give us. Comfort, security, and identity. He wants to give it to us all. And the next level... The next level where all this comes from, the next level is knowing him, knowing his goodness, because that's where this freedom comes from. Knowing and trusting he's for me forever. Hallelujah. What a God. What a God we have. That is the life that he's calling us to, and it's free. You can have it. You don't have to get to a certain point of holiness before you can get to that next level. You can have it. As a sinner, you can have it. Not because you're good, but because he's good. And he sent his son to be the savior of sinners like you and I. Hallelujah.